Conspiracy theories about the death of Adolf Hitler, dictator of Germany from 1933 to 1945, contradict the accepted fact that he committed suicide in the Führerbunker on April 30, 1945. Stemming from a campaign of Soviet disinformation, most of these theories hold that Hitler and his wife, Eva Braun, survived and escaped from Berlin, with some asserting that he went to South America. In the post-war years, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI and Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, investigated some of the reports, without lending them credence. The 2009 revelation that a skull in the Soviet archives long, dubiously, claimed to be Hitler's actually belonged to a woman has helped fuel conspiracy theories. While the claims have received some exposure in popular culture, they are regarded by historians and scientific experts as disproven fringe theories. Eyewitnesses and Hitler's dental remains demonstrate that he died in his Berlin bunker in 1945. The narrative that Hitler did not commit suicide, but instead escaped Berlin, was first presented to the general public by Marshal Georgi Zhukov at a press conference on June 9, 1945, on orders from Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. That month, 68% of Americans polled thought Hitler was still alive. When asked at the Potsdam Conference in July 1945 how Hitler had died, Stalin said he was either living in Spain or Argentina. In July 1945, British newspapers repeated comments from a Soviet officer that a charred body discovered by the Soviets was a very poor double. American newspapers also repeated dubious quotes, such as that of the Russian garrison commandant of Berlin, who claimed that Hitler had gone into hiding somewhere in Europe. This disinformation, propagated by Stalin's government, has been a springboard for various conspiracy theories, despite the official conclusion by Western powers and the consensus of historians that Hitler killed himself on April 30, 1945. It even caused a minor resurgence in Nazism during the Allied occupation of Germany. In October 1945, Francois quoted Otto Abetz, Nazi ambassador to Vichy France during World War II, as saying that Hitler was not dead. The first detailed investigation by Western powers began that November after Dick White, then head of counterintelligence in the British sector of Berlin, had their agent Hugh Trevor Roper investigate the matter to counter the Soviet claims. His findings that Hitler and Braun had died by suicide in Berlin were written in a report in 1946 and published in a book the next year. Regarding the case, Trevor Roper reflected, the desire to invent legends and fairy tales, is, greater, than the love of truth. In April 1947, 45% of Americans polled thought Hitler was still alive. In 1946, an American minor and Baptist preacher named William Henry Johnson began sending out a series of letters under the pen name Furrier No. 1, claiming to be the living Hitler and to have escaped with Braun to Kentucky. He alleged that tunnels were being dug to Washington, D.C., and that he would engage armies, nuclear bombs and invisible spaceships to take over the universe. Johnson was able to raise up to $15,000, over $140,000 in 2020 currency, promising lofty incentives to his supporters, before being arrested on charges of mail fraud in mid-1956. In March 1948, newspapers around the world reported the account of former German Lt. Arthur F. Mackensen, who claimed that on May 5, 1945, during the Soviet bombardment of Berlin, he, Hitler, Braun and Martin Bormann had escaped the four bunker and tanks. The group allegedly flew from Tempelhof Airport to Tondern, Denmark, where Hitler gave a speech and took a flight with Braun to the coast. In a May 1948 issue of the Italian magazine Tempo, author Emil Ludwig wrote that a double could have been cremated in Hitler's place, allowing him to flee by submarine to Argentina. Presiding judge at the Einsatz Group in trial at Nuremberg Michael Mismano wrote in his 1950 book that such theories were about as rational as to say that Hitler was carried away by angels, citing a lack of evidence, the confirmation of Hitler's dental remains, and the fact that Ludwig had expressly ignored the presence of witnesses in the bunker. In his refutation of Mackinson's account, Mismano cites a subsequent story of his, in which the lieutenant allegedly flew on 9th of May to Malaga, Spain, when he was attacked by 30 lightning fighters over Marseille, despite the war having ended in Europe, purportedly killing all 33 passengers besides himself. From 1951 to 1972, the National Police Gazette, an American tabloid-style magazine, ran a series of stories asserting Hitler's survival. 18, unproven allegations include that Hitler conceived children with Braun around the late 1930s, 
that he was actually in prime physical health at the end of World War II, and that he fled to Antarctica or South America. Writing for the Gazette, U.S. intelligence officer William F. Heimlich claimed that the blood found on Hitler's sofa did not match his blood type. Following decades of other contradictory reports, in 1968 Soviet journalist Lev Bezimensky released his book The Death of Adolf Hitler. It includes a purported Soviet autopsy report which concludes that Hitler died by cyanide poisoning, despite no dissection of internal organs being recorded to confirm this and eyewitness accounts to the contrary. Bezimensky claims that the autopsy reports were not released earlier in case someone might try to slip into the role of the Fuhrer saved by a miracle. He later admitted that he was acting as a typical party propagandist, and intended to lead the reader to the conclusion that, a gunshot, was a pipe dream or half an invention and that Hitler actually poisoned himself. The book's claims have been widely derided by Western historians. In 2020, historian Richard J. Evans wrote, For some on the far right it seems inconceivable that would have died such a cowardly and ignominious death, in some cases, the proponents of Hitler's survival have strong links to the neo-Nazi scene, or betray anti-Semitic beliefs, or are involved with white supremacy organizations in the U.S. that regard Hitler as an inspiration for their activities, some fringe groups purveying various forms of alternative knowledge, such as occultists or UFO enthusiasts, seem to think that associating their beliefs with Hitler will gain them attention. So in some versions of the survival myth, Hitler's escape was achieved by occult means, or involved his traveling to a secret Nazi flying saucer base beneath the Antarctic ice. Evidence At the end of 1945, Stalin ordered a second commission to investigate Hitler's death, in part to investigate rumors of Hitler's survival. On May 30, 1946, part of a skull was found, ostensibly in the crater where Hitler's remains had been exhumed. It consists of part of the occipital bone and part of both parietal bones. The nearly complete left parietal bone has a bullet hole, apparently an exit wound. In 2009, on an episode of History's Mystery Quest, University of Connecticut archaeologist and bone specialist Nick Bellantoni examined the skull fragment, which Soviet officials had believed to be Hitler's. According to Bellantoni, the bone seemed very thin for a male, and the sutures where the skull plates come together seemed to correspond to someone under 40. A small piece detached from the skull was DNA tested, as was blood from Hitler's sofa. The skull was determined to be that of a woman, providing fodder for conspiracy theorists, while the blood was confirmed to belong to a male. Neither former Soviet nor Russian officials have claimed the skull was the main piece of evidence, instead citing jawbone fragments and two dental bridges found in May 1945. The items were shown to two associates of Hitler's personal dentist, Hugo Blaschka, his assistant Keta Huserman and longtime dental technician Fritz Ekman. They confirmed that the dental remains were Hitler's and Braun's, as did Blaschka in later statements. According to Ada Petrova and Peter Watson, Hugh Thomas disputed these dental remains in his 1995 book, but also speculated that Hitler probably died in the bunker after being strangled by his valet Heinz Linge. They noted that even Dr. Thomas admits that there is no evidence to support this theory. Ian Kershaw wrote that the theories of Hugh Thomas, that Hitler was strangled by Linge, and that the female body burned was not that of Eva Braun, who escaped from the bunker, belong in fairyland. In 2017, French forensic pathologist Philippe Charlier confirmed that teeth on one of the jawbone fragments were in perfect agreement with an X-ray taken of Hitler in 1944. This investigation of the teeth by the French team, the results of which were reported in the European Journal of Internal Medicine in May 2018, found that the dental remains were definitively Hitler's teeth. According to Charlier, there is no possible doubt. Our study proves that Hitler died in 1945 in Berlin. An index card-sized note indicated by photocopied staples, with a cursive handwritten text, Dear Sir, I'll bet a dollar to a donut that Hitler is located right in New York City. Paragraph break, there's no other city in the world where he could so easily be absorbed. No doubt you have considered this possibility, but I mention it for what it is worth anyway. JFK FBI documents declassified by the 1998 Nazi War Crimes Disclosure Act, which began to be released online by the early 2010s, contain a number of alleged sightings of Hitler in Europe, South America, and the United States, some of which assert that he changed his appearance via plastic surgery or by shaving off his toothbrush mustache. 
Although some notable individuals speculated that Hitler could have survived, including General of the Army Dwight D. Eisenhower and Lt. John F. Kennedy in mid-1945, the documents state that the alleged sightings of Hitler could not be verified. Richard J. Evans notes that the FBI was obliged to document such claims no matter how erroneous or deranged they were. Philip Citron's Claims a declassified CIA document dated October 3, 1955 reported claims made by a self-proclaimed former German SS trooper named Philip Citron that Hitler was still alive, and that he left Colombia for Argentina around January 1955. Enclosed with the document was an alleged photograph of Citron and a person he claimed to be Hitler, on the back of the photo was written Adolf Schudelmayer and the year 1954. The report also states that neither the contact who reported his conversations with Citron, nor the CIA station was in a position to give an intelligent evaluation of the information. The station chief superiors told him that enormous efforts could be expended on this matter with remote possibilities of establishing anything concrete, and the investigation was dropped. The 2011 book Grey Wolf, The Escape of Adolf Hitler by British authors Simon Dunstan and Gerard Williams, and the 2014 docudrama film by Williams based on it, suggests that a number of U-boats took certain Nazis and Nazi loot to Argentina, where the Nazis were supported by future President Juan Perón, who, with his wife Evita, had been receiving money from the Nazis for some time. As claims received by the FBI stated, Hitler allegedly arrived in Argentina, first staying at Hacienda San Ramon, east of San Carlos de Bariloche, then moved to a Bavarian-style mansion at Analco, a remote and barely accessible spot at the northwest end of Noel Huapi Lake, close to the Chilean border. Supposedly, Eva Braun left Hitler around 1954 and moved to New Cane with their daughter Ursula, Ushi, and Hitler died in February 1962. This theory of Hitler's flight to Argentina has been dismissed by historians, including Guy Walters. He has described Dunstan and Williams' theory as rubbish, adding, there's no substance to it at all. It appeals to the deluded fantasies of conspiracy theorists, and has no place whatsoever in historical research. Walters contended that it is simply impossible to believe that so many people could keep such a grand-scale deception so quiet, and says that no serious historian would give the story any credibility. Historian Richard Evans has many misgivings about the book and subsequent film. For example, he notes that the story about Ursula or Ushi is merely second-hand hearsay evidence without identification or corroboration. Evans also notes that Dunstan and Williams made extensive use of a book Hitler Murió en la Argentina by Manuel Monasterio, which the author later admitted included made-up strange ramblings, and speculation. Evans contends that Monasterio's book is not to be regarded as a reliable source. In the end, Evans dismisses the survival stories of Hitler as fantasies. Hunting Hitler Investigators of the History Channel series Hunting Hitler, 2015-2018 claimed to have found declassified documents and to have interviewed witnesses indicating that Hitler escaped from Germany and traveled to South America by U-boat. He and other Nazis then allegedly plotted a Fourth Reich. Such conspiracy theories of survival and escape have been widely dismissed. Contradictorily, in 2017 the series was praised by the tabloid-style National Police Gazette, which historically was a supporter of the fringe theory, while calling on Russia to allow Hitler's jawbone remains to be DNA tested. After being featured on the series as an expert on World War II, author James Holland explained that was very careful never to mention on film that I thought either Hitler or Bormann escaped. Because they didn't.